hello 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 everybody and welcome to another episode of forever young i am your host jelani and i'll i don't know what i'm saying right now i'm new at this podcasting game sue me and anyway if you're watching this on youtube please don't be afraid to hit that like button and help support this new venture on the channel as well leave a comment subscribe all that good stuff but if you're also the link but if you don't have time to watch an hour-long video there will be a link to a google play and spotify where this podcast where this podcast will be available as well so you can listen to it on the go for your listening pleasure now today we have a low we have a loaded schedule i should say and the first topic of discussion is a little somber. Not going to lie. We're going to talk about some serious stuff right now. But it's only because it involves one of my favorite, all-time favorite artists, singers, whatever. And that is Michael Jackson. Now, for those who don't know me, which is most of everybody... Then you should, then I would say that Michael Jackson is my all-time favorite artist ever, living or dead. Now, the reason is a t- sort of a somber topic of discussion is because new development a new development arose in this whole leaving Neverland situation. And as of July 5th, the, the, the development goes like this. Three Michael, fa- three Michael Jackson fan clubs in France are suing these leaving Neverland accusers. And just a quick summary for those who don't know, and if you don't know, what's wrong with you? Leaving Neverland is a multi-part documentary with that focuses on two of Michael Jackson's accusers, Wade Robson and James Safechuck. And there's been a and it just, it's just stirred up a whole bunch of controversy since it's released. Now, this new development involves three French fan clubs suing these accusers over defamation. And basically, what they're trying to do is end or try to start a wave that would end the unfair defamation of a dead person, whether it's Michael Jackson or anybody else in the future. Because in in the UK and in the United States, it's legal or not necessarily frowned upon to pursue defamation, whether they're living or dead. Now, the reason I wanted to speak on this is because I wanted just to give my insight on this whole Michael Jackson sexual abuse situ- situation. And But the entire point of this is not to discredit anybody who suffered from sexual assault, sexual abuse at, at, at all. I'm, I just want to give my insight on how I feel and how I've and just how I don't know how I just how I want to go how I want to go forward forward with all this now I mentioned before I am a huge Michael Jackson fan I've been for a long time like got all the albums I got it I got even the compilation album that's because I just love music so much. I feel like it's inspirational. Inspirational, really good, honestly. And everybody, I don't care who you are, everybody has heard at least one Michael Jackson song. And his level of superstardom is just, it just, no, I don't think, I personally don't think that anybody, at least not in this generation, or even in the next one coming forward, will it be able to reach his level of celebrity, his level of superstardom, the way that he's 
reached and impacted so much of the world. Now, th his whole sexual assault thing, or these allegations that happened, started like long before I was even born in the early 1990s. At least that's when they were first first coming into light. And and for me, uh, I I couldn't say I can't really say that he didn't do it just based on the interviews and the things I've heard that were that were done like you you see Michael Jackson and his persona that everybody knows him for is like an innocent childlike caring person who who just who just yearns for who has a childlike heart and reaches and feels I want to say more comfortable around children and that possibly stems stem from him having a lack of a chi lack of childhood from his own and coming from and with an adult perspective I can see where these allegations can come to light cuz right now the biggest thing that comes to my mind is during an interview I don't know like I don't know when this interview happened but I just remember it he was you were asking if he felt like it was appropriate for like a 30 year old 40 year old man to sleep in the same bed as a child who isn't his own and he felt like it wasn't appropriate at all and I can tell that just from I'm not even a parent but just coming from somebody who works with children and just understanding I guess morals I guess see how that can raise a huge huge red flag this, we have an adult man who feel like it's comfortable to or feels like it's not a problem to sleep in the same bed as children who aren't his own now whether or not he did anything again we don't know that the only people who do know that are potentially the accusers and mr. Jackson himself which and I'm, I'm just get gathering most of my thoughts right now just trying to because I feel like it's better just to get just to talk out your thoughts so you can be able to organize them and I just know for the longest time I I didn't want to be believe believe it at all but that's just because of my own perception of how I viewed him. He here's a man who does so much for the world, a philanthropist, a humanitarian. He gives so much for the betterment of others. Like how how could this be a monster? How can this how can this man how can somebody who's known for doing so much good be capable of so much evil if you know if you get what I'm coming at but let's let's just switch up the perspective what if he will let's let's just say a man who works at Walmart let's just say you have a, a Walmart greeter not famous at all and he admits the same thing he doesn't he finds it doesn't find it inappropriate for a grown man to sleep in the same bed as as same bed with somebody else's children immediately you would think this man is up to no good that he harms children that he that he should be on some sort of registers list or something but because of Michael Jackson's celebrity 
is it's okay for him to get a pass and a lot of people aren't giving him a pass even even beyond the grave there's a lot of people who feel like he's he's harmed these children and I just know that I can't I personally cannot say beyond a reasonable doubt that he's done or done it or done that he did do it or did not do it that's what I'm trying to get at I apologize it's a little bit early while I'm recording this but I got to get this out here for y'all in my heart I want to say right now that I want to believe that he didn't do it I want to believe that he the person you see on camera the person who's helping these children helping just people around the world but in my mind I gotta think objectively about this I can't let the bias of my favorite singer essentially I can't let that bias judge cloud my judgment so ultimately ultimately my views are that I'm while I'm not going to stop listening to his music I'm not just gonna stay silent against somebody who's potentially I'm not gonna stay silent against somebody who's potentially harmed others now whether or not you believe the accusers that is really just based on your own convictions your own views the evidence has been a lot of the evidence has pre been presented for you now it's just up to you to decide how you want to move forward with this now I'm just, now I'm just, just going reading a little bit more about this a little bit more about this case it's of course his estate is just saying that nothing nothing happened and they've been vehement about nothing happening saying that it's essentially a witch hunt and I have a quote from the fan club's lawyer saying that these allegations amounted to a quote a genuine lynching so there's been a lot of backlash on both ends just based on these allegations and but really even my own thoughts are I will say even my own thoughts are incomplete because I don't I don't know the entire story and really nobody knows the entire story it's and it's, it's hard to make that call when you just don't know sure he was acquitted I pretty believe back in 2005 don't don't quote me on that but that's just that's just a date I remember yeah and though even though he was acquitted that doesn't and also settled that doesn't admit to that doesn't amount to innocence but it also doesn't admit guilt so this entire it seems like this entire debate over the course of 30 years it just back and forth he said she said but uh, he said she said but what uh, no matter so it doesn't seem like we are ever going to get a definitive answer as to what happened so are these are these accusers going to keep on fighting or are they are more accusers or alleged accusers going to come on come on up and say something or what else is gonna happen are they gonna end up settling they're, like there's a lot of to me there are a lot of questions that are that arise that come that come from all of this
But honestly, I'm trying to talk. I'm just tired of talking about the negatives right now. I do want to talk about some of the positives. As a matter of fact, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to flip this right now, and I'm going to put put things in a positive perspective when it comes to Michael Jackson. And right now, that is going to involve me rating rating his studio albums. My t t let's see, I'm gonna say my top five. That would be a that's an easier thing to do, right? Yeah, but so I'm gonna go right now. My top five favorite Michael Jackson studio albums. I don't even gotta look, but right now I'll say number one is bad. T t ooh, believe me, I've seen almost. I won't even say almost. I've seen every one of his music videos, and I'll say Bad has some of the greatest music videos ever. And that, accompanied with the music, the cinematography of the videos, it is freaking fantastic. Like, like the song itself, Bad has a is like a freaking mini movie. Same thing with Smooth Criminal, Speed Demon, all like. The way you make me feel is an iconic video. So it, it bad has some some bops. I will say that it has some bangers. If that if that that's what the kids still saying bangers bops head nods. What if they freaking slap? I will say that. And I'll say, ooh, dirty Diana. Ooh, that was my favorite song for the longest time. Like my favorite favorite song ever. Need I no. no. See, t t this man makes some fire. Leave me alone. Oh man. Woo. When he when he was knocking back some other allegations, not with sexual assault, but just other allegations. But that he turned he turned his own negativity into some positives. Oh, I loved it. And I'll say my favorite song on Bad is Dirty Diana. Yes. Oh, oh, I just remembered Man in the Mirror. Can't tell me that song didn't touch your heart. I don't care how you feel about the man right now. Just listen to the song. And you cannot tell me that Man in the Mirror does not touch your soul. Gonna make a change for once in my life. Gonna feel real good. Gonna make a difference. Gonna make it right. Woo! Alright, so we got bad as my number one. Number two? I don't know why it's so hard for me to think of my number two, but I would say number two is history. Yeah, I know. It's one of his later albums, and frankly, this one of the one of the later albums that didn't do too well in relative to the other ones. Pardon me. Oh, I thought I burped. Did. False alarm. But I, I love the singles on history. You are not alone. Perfect. Beautiful ballad. We sing that on. Put that on repeat so many times. We got Stranger in Moscow. What we got? 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 We got Ghost. I think Ghost was on Blood on the Dance Floor. But yeah, history itself. Little Susie. Scream. Oh, tell me you guys didn't not like that video for Scream. I I can't say I remember when it first came out because it came out a year after it was born, so I didn't watch it. But I do know from what other people said and from the research I've done that it was the most most expensive i think right now is still the most expensive music video ever shot if not it was back then but whew, just again just man just turning his positivity his negative into positivity and my favorite song on history you are not alone beautiful perfect <clears throat> yeah Number three album, Dangerous. Dangerous. 
and you're right. Good, good, good. I, I feel like Dangerous is is, a, is the perfect 90s album. Like when, you, like when you just hear the song, it just resonates. It just resonates the vibe of the 90s. Mainly pop, mainly in, in pop culture and everything else. Like with Jam, his his what's his face was the collaboration with Michael Jordan, the two great mics of the gen of that generation. Um, Jam. Remember the time? We, you remember when we fell in love? We were young and innocent then. Do you remember? It was so beautiful, but I would say my favorite album, not my favorite album, my favorite song on Dangerous is Will You Be There. Nice seven minute chill song, but I remember I was at a camp one time and they were all in, it was, it was a leadership camp and they just all wanted us to just, I don't know, showcase a talent or something you wanted to do in front of everybody else so me I wanted to sing because I felt like I had a decent voice back then <laughs> probably do but I probably do now if I still tried but anyway I felt like I had a decent voice and it was I decided I wanted to sing will you be there not the whole thing but just a little snippet of it I did my thing I got laughed at hurt back then I don't really care right now but hey it go it just goes to show yeah you just gotta keep the faith you know what I'm saying and if you get that props to you so in order bad history dangerous number four uh, I'd give it to thriller cuz thriller just is if when you think of a Michael Jackson song or any album you think thriller a lot of people's favorite songs thriller beat it billy jean a lot of his earlier stuff i'm not i'm not gonna deny the greatness of those songs because beat it goes in tell me. thriller everybody knows the dance i practice it day in and day out just so i can get it just right so you, you can't tell me that thriller doesn't so thriller it, it's it's a good one. It shout out to Thriller. It's not my not my favorite, but it it is a good one. But my favorite song on Thriller, gotta say that it would be probably be Beat It. Just thinking about it right now. Yep, Beat It. That's that's my that's my go to when I think of Thriller. And I really feel like that's. The first Michael Jackson song I've ever heard. That or Jam. I just have vague memories. But, yeah. And number five, it would be uh, Blood on the Dance Floor. A lot of the songs on there are remixes, but uh, I really like the originals, like Blood on the Dance Floor, Morphine, Ghost, Money. I'm pretty sure one of those two is on history. One of those is on, is on Blood on the Dance Floor, between Ghost and Money. But that the originals on that song freaking phenomenal like is it scary okay i remember now ghost is on history i do remember now because is it scary is a remix of ghost Whew. i had to just get clear my own thoughts right now but blood on the dance floor is a freaking good album and it is a fabulous song dum -ba -dum -ba -ba -ba. Okay, I don't, I don't even really got it in my head right now because I got so much in the head. But I would say my favorite song on Blood on the Dance Floor is possibly "Is It Scary?" Like it takes Ghost but turns it into like even more chilling. If that makes any sense, it takes a scary song and ramps it up to eleven. Hey, I like it. And if you haven't heard any of those songs, I implore you, please check them out. So, the final top tier ranking. We have Bad. 
Bad History, Dangerous, Thriller, Blood on the Dance Floor. Yeah. And he also had, and if you don't know, he has a lot of posthumous albums out. He has Michael Immortal, which is great. It remixes everything. He has basically a remix of everything. That he, or a lot of stuff that he's done. And Escape. With ha which has some original songs, so those are those are good stuff, good stuff to listen to, and it's good to end things on a or to end this topic on a positive note because I don't I don't dead or alive I don't like dragging people through the mud. Sure, on my I like I like roasting I like do, I like I just like playing around a lot of time, but you know. All honesty, I believe everybody has some good to do contribute in good or bad or whatever bad they've done. Be like everyone, just depending on if they're truly sorry, they deserve a second chance if they're willing to repent. That's just that's just that's my that's just my take on it. But let's keep this good old gravy train rolling with some more freaking positive news which i'm absolutely stoked for <laughs> oh I had to clip as a matter of fact hold on let me get some agua right now to clear my throat because i've actually been talking for almost 30 minutes straight <sighs> Woo. shout out to nestle pure life i ain't sponsored but shout out to water but what i'm trying to say is I, what I am freaking stoked for is that Avril Lavigne is starting a new tour this year at the latter part of this year and you best believe your boy got his tickets so I am about to be up there rolling rolling getting turned lit however the kids say I don't know if you can get lit to her concert but I am freaking ready oh man I just gotta say, I've been a fan of hers for a long, 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 long time. Like, I would say even more so than Michael Jackson. Just, 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 just based on how long I've been listening to her, or how long I've known about her music, till becoming a full-on big old fan. Like, I, I just have right now. I'm gonna tell you. Quick, quick side note. I have vague memory. I feel like I was in Germany at the time. And that would have been in like, I think it was like 2000, 2001. It was, I'm pretty sure it was in 2001. Because I remember hearing Complicated on the radio. I had no clue who was singing it. But I just, I just, I just remember standing near a radio in a, in a white room I wasn't I wasn't alone I just remember standing in a radio in a white room like I think I'm crazy and I just hear complicated I, I don't know who was singing it but I knew I liked it and that memory has been with me for the past I don't know like like nearly 15 years or so when when did that when did that song uh, 18 years I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure complicated came out in 2001 2001 or two one, one of those years I remember but through just th throughout the rest of my life I just been hearing hearing a, a lot of her music the next big memory I have is hearing girlfriend a few years like during my middle school middle school year that came out in 2007 I just remember watching the music video it was lit it was freaking lit and then the bit then fast forward to like my freshman year of college I was at my mom's house or my parents house and I don't know I didn't need needed some music so I decided you know what Avril Lavigne is freaking lit I haven't heard any anything she's done in a while so I decided I'm just gonna look 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 up some stuff and boy girl son 
it just blew me back like you know we listen to music for that first time and it really resonates with you it really hits you just be you just be you don't even have words you just be making faces i can't make a face i'm not on camera but you get what i'm saying though you just that music just resonates perfectly within you that's what i was like when i heard a lot of most of Avril Lavigne's song. I remember I was just on the treadmill uh, 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 listening to their Under My Skin album. I was like, <gasps> she, she really gets me. She really gets me. Yes. And from that point on, I just wanted more. Want, I just really wanted more. I spent all my time getting your music, buying out, buying the albums. Like, as of right now, I have every single one of our albums. Including the new one, which is Head Above Water, which you got to check out. I will say this for free. Check out that album, Head Above Water. If you First, just check out the, lead, the leading single. Because it is so beautiful, so powerful. It will leave you freaking hooked. After not performing for, uh, let me, I, I gotta, I gotta do math, because her last album before Head Above Water was Avril Lavigne, which came out in 2013. So that's six, six years ago. Head Above Water came out at the end of last year. So she hasn't performed in five years, give, give, give or take five years. And you can really tell the evolution in her, in her voice and her style just based on this song. And I just really worth can explain how, how powerful it is and how, just how great it is. And you best believe, once that concert comes, I'm going, I'm going to go in October. That's the tour starts in September. She's going to my city in October. Or the city I'm going to in October, so best believe I'm about to be in there like a swimwear. But I just gotta say, she is. I know. Hmm. I know. I don't know. I'm just trying to get my get my words right because it just feels kind of weird to talk about my. I know a lot of people's favorite art favorite artists are different especially when it comes to me but this is me this is freaking me i like what i like and that's why i'm here talking give you my perspective i don't gotta worry about nobody else i really don't care about anybody else's opinion on certain things you don't like your music all right that's fine i'll listen to you here's to never growing up all by myself on repeat i got contagious for my for my alarm have so for the past few years I don't and I never got tired of it so you, you can like who you like I don't like who I like and as long as we get together I can like you you can like me we're gonna have a good old-fashioned good time but hold on I let me just gotta check on sending right quick da, 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 da. but yeah this new this new music I highly implore you to listen. Like, if you, even if you haven't heard any of her stuff for a long time, like the songs that she's most notable noted for are "Girlfriend," "Skater Boy," and "Complicated." Please, I implore you, check out some of check out some of her other stuff, especially some of the newer stuff, because it will leave you hooked. She even she did a collaboration with Nicki Minaj on her new song "Dumb Blonde." And personally, I like the song. I like I like the song as a solo, but it is either way. It is still fantastic. It really is. And I know this past few minutes, I'm just going on. I'm just harping on how much I, I love this singer, and I do, I do, I do. Who? Those who know me, they they know they know how I feel. I got posters of her all over my room. I ain't afraid to admit that. I'm not. But really, that's all. All I got. To, really, all I got to say on the matter. Not, not much. Just she's touring right now, so go check it. Check out her music. Just do it. Check it. Check it out. 
and I will see you guys at her tour. Hopefully. Aha. And another, speaking of more positivity, because we started off negative, but we're going to end positive. Gosh darn it. The Little Mermaid. I'm pretty sure you already know that the Little Mermaid, it, they're doing their casting, but the biggest news about casting, about casting for the Little Mermaid, is who would be the who would be the part of play the part of Ariel? And lo and behold, it has been announced that singer Halle Bailey, not Halle Berry, but Halle Bailey of the duo Chloe and, Chloe and Halle will be playing the lead role of Ariel in the upcoming film, The Little Mermaid. And I, I just gotta say, props. Props to Hollywood. Just prop, just, just, just props to the world in general. Because I'm, we are, it finally seems that like within the last few years, even if it's only a little bit, there's been some, we're finally getting some progressive change. Like for, like for real, like you're finally getting more representation in, on the big screen, which gives, which just give, gives hope, gives hope that truly anybody can do whatever they feel like it. And that makes me freaking, freaking stoked, freaking excited. And you better believe, once this movie comes out, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be all up in there. I've, I've been enjoying most of these live action remakes. Haven't seen Dumbo, but I, I'm sure I heard it flopped. Dumbo, I'm mean, gonna wasn't really a big fan of Dumbo anyway, but I, uh, that time I did burp, but I digress. But what I'm saying is new diversity in these movies, especially Disney movies. And since Disney has been infamous for racism and among other things in the past, it's finally, it's finally good. It's finally good to see some progressive change. And I'm, I'm all for it. I'm all for a chocolatey Ariel. I'm all for the black queens doing what they gotta do. But yeah, I'm not, ain't no, no, no buts. I'm, I'm all for that progression. And it kind of makes me wonder what they, what are they gonna do next? Cause with, cause I just want to get like an example with Aladdin. So Aladdin was already. Uh, was was based in India, so if they didn't get any Indian or Middle Eastern leads for those roles, then Disney would have had some issues. So it's kind of, that was kind of the obvious choice that they go for. They had to go for that. However, ever let's just take for instance Mulan. I haven't read any of the new developments for Mulan. As a matter of fact, before I sound before I sound stupid, I'm gonna look it up right now. Cause I want to see. Let me let me check on this cast. Cause there we go. There we go. All right. So so Mulan right now is coming out or is projected to come out in 2020. But I just know a while ago when they were trying to pick out the roles, they were they were having some they were having a bit of issues because of they apparently they didn't choose a Chinese woman or an Asian woman to play Mulan, but that's changed and I've been looking at the cast right now. It is 100. I, I'm, I'm digging it. The diversity is freaking real. Well, not necessarily diverse, but shout out to the Asian American culture. Shout out to the culture. Shout out to the culture because we can find, we can get an authentic movie, and it. I'm pretty sure it will be a good movie without necessarily whitewashing it. 
much and it is I really in, enjoy that I really really do because think if you think about it really a lot of the Disney princesses were based on your based on your European tales Cin Snow White Cinderella Sleeping Beauty Frozen among and that's not, that's not even all that's just all you know what I'm about to look it up right now I'm to do it again cuz I am cuz I, I want I want to know I, I I guess I guess to do this uh, all right so let me look, let's look at this what? okay beauty and the I'm just gonna name all the ones that have European culture in, in them so we have Beauty and the Beast, Rapunzel, Little Mermaid, Cinderella, Sleeping Beauty, uh, uh, Tangled, I don't know that story. I don't know the original story. S Snow White. That is seven out of one, two, three, four, five, six, twelve. Seven out of twelve princesses. And so, most of them are going to be, I would say, whitewashed. But it's it's nice to see that the other five, at least some of them, have the opportunity. Wait, hold on. Let me see. Let me go back. Let me go back. Let me let me go back real quick. Yep, yep. Like seven out of seven out of those twelve have been whitewashed. One of them has an African American lead, which is Little Mermaid. So shout out, shout out, bless. So I just so half and half, or I would say, I want to keep saying whitewashed. Half are based on your Euro European European tales. So nice to see more representation from other races that can that can play those roles pretty pretty well that's really all I I got to say on that shout out to Disney for adding a little adding a little melanin to a classic tale and according to this article production not gonna start until 2020 so give it a few years and I'm pretty sure we're gonna see a fantastic a fantastic Tale, a fantastic rendition of a classic tale. Now, before I end this podcast, I want to do another segment that I really want to keep on going called Unpopular Opinions. And I'm going to start off by saying this I don't like shooter games like Call of Duty. Battlefield, that just ain't for me. I mean, I can't really see myself just. I I don't know. It just I, I just find them boring, and the entire culture around Call of Duty at Field has put me off to mainstream gaming. Especially that culture of the 360 and shooters. Like no 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 thank you. So I I play what I want to play and you do you I also feel like Minecraft is freaking boring and I've tried it I've tried it multiple times but I do not have the attention span to just sit there collecting hits hit stuff with bread an axe whatever and just build that's all that game's about just building I'm not an architect I don't inspire to be an architect so I don't, I don't understand the culture behind Minecraft. Like, someone please tell me, what is so, what is so, what's so dazzling, what's so entrancing about Minecraft? I don't, I don't understand the appeal. I, and believe me, I tried, I have tried, I played it multiple times. But the fact, the fact of the matter is. It is freaking boring. So somebody, please tell me. Tell me the appeal. That's the word I was looking for before. Tell me the appeal of Minecraft. Please. 
please. And let's see. Uh, uh eh, that's really all I wanted. That's really all I wanted. Want to say? I know it was, a, it was a short one, but hey, it is what you, it is what it is. So I hope you guys did enjoy this this podcast again. Apologize for the serious tone in the beginning, but it's it's a real thing. It's a real thing out there, and it needs to be it needs to be addressed, especially with these new developments coming forward and me being a fan myself. I don't want to stay quiet anymore. I don't want to stay quiet on anything so serious, especially if anybody needs to be. I don't want to be, especially if anybody needs to be heard. If anybody needs their stories told or need somebody championed for them so that's all i got to say on that matter if you did enjoy if you're watching on youtube please hit that like button and i will see you guys again in the i'll see you guys again next week to talk about some more good stuff if you have any topics you like this if you have any topics you would like to hear me talk about please put them in the comment section and if you're listening to this on Google Play or Spotify, hope you did enjoy and hope you follow. And I'll see you next time. Bye.